good people. This is the 8-Bit Animal. And you guys know I don't really stand for a lot. I don't, I'm not falling over myself to be a big fan of anyone in particular. I appreciate your work, but I don't appreciate, I've never been a fan of a publisher or developer. Except for Natsume in the days of the NES. Because Natsume developed and published some of the finest action games around. Today's game is a prime example of that. They even they were even good enough to rework stuff that they had done in Japan and published in Japan. Rework it to suit the American market. And it was so good that not only did it sell well enough to warrant a sequel, but it made the cover of Nintendo Power. Everything didn't make the cover of Nintendo Power. Today's game is Power Blade. Now, Power Blade, I mentioned Natsume, but Power Blade was published by Taito. And Taito, for the entire run of the NES, was solid. They released solid action game after solid action game and solid arcade port after solid arcade port. This was one of the examples where they worked with Natsume to publish one of their works and it worked out wonderfully for us as gamers. Now this game is set in the distant future, 2191, um, and you play as a guy named Nova. And Nova is charged with restoring a supercomputer that essentially runs the world after aliens roll up and shut the computer down, throwing the world in, into total disarray. This, this guy Nova is armed with a boomerang. That boomerang can be powered up to the point where eventually you'll end up wearing a mech suit for a period of time and the boomerang turns into a, to something called a power blade and the power blade can kill pretty much everything except for bosses in one hit but you only get three hit points with that with that mech suit it's a cool concept. The game is a lot of fun. It's actually one of the instances where they made a game a little bit harder for the American audience. They also made a game made the game longer for the American audience. They gave us longer levels. They extended the levels by a lot. Put in this uh, this extra little thing where you have to find a guy that has. Uh, that in each level that has like a key card and stuff like that to get to the boss um, and the boss fights are a lot of fun in this game as well soundtrack is solid everything in this game is good Natsume knocked it out of the park as they usually do well couldn't say that about the original though Power Blazer is a middling title it's not fantastic um, but it's not it's not bad but it's not good either um, and also power blaze power blazer wouldn't have moved in the US because it was so similar to Mega Man from the level select mechanic which carried over to power blade to the aesthetic of the main character he looked like Mega Man in a different outfit with a boomerang. But this worked out perfectly for us. And it worked out so well that about two years later, Power Blade 2 was released. And Power Blade 2 is one of the rarest titles on the NES simply because it came out so late in the NES life cycle. Now, if you're curious about getting your hands on a copy of Power Blade, once upon a time you could get a copy for 10 15 dollars. 
nowadays you'll be hard pressed to find a copy anywhere near that price I just looked on eBay and saw that reproductions of the original Power Blade are going for $30. That is heartbreaking because there were a lot of copies of this out in circulation. Now the sequel, forget about it. You're paying minimum $500 for a loose cart, about $1,500 for a complete cart with manual and box and all that. This game is fantastic. I don't know if it justifies the price, but it is a fantastic action game and one of Natsume's finer works. And I recommend it completely, but not at that price. This has been the 8-Bit Animal. And I'll catch you beautiful people next time. Tomorrow, we look at a schmuck. It's good though. It, it's regular. I promise it has nothing to do with floating zombie heads this time.